Welcome back. This is Jennifer, and I'm thankful you're here. I believe one of the best tools you can have in your craft room is a brayer. A brayer can be used for many things, even if you don't have a gel press. Just with stamping ink and a brayer, you can do a lot. I have eight ideas to share with you for using a brayer without a gel press. I'm sharing four in this video and four in my next video, so be sure to come back for that. Today is about using the brayer with die cuts and stamps. Tomorrow, it's about using it with embossing folders and stencils. Now, the brayers that I like to use most are from Tim Holtz. There are the two sizes that you see here, a small and then the little bit larger. And there are other brayers out there. You could use them, but these are fantastic. I feel like they work great with stamping ink, which is what I like to use them for. You can pop off the rolling part to easily clean it and then pop it back in place. It also has two little feet that allow you to prop it up on your desk without making a mess. And you can hang them thanks to the loop and the handle. So I have a few of these brayers just because I create a lot of backgrounds at once. But really, if you just get one, you're good to go. Although it's nice to have the two sizes. Now you can use any dye, pigment, distress, or distress oxide ink today. I'm using Simons' Stamp Saturated Inks just because I love the colors and they seem to work great with a brayer, but use whatever you have. My first idea for using a brayer without a gel press is just to apply ink onto a background to create a really cool overlapped ink look. I'll show three different examples so you can get an idea of how best to do this and get the results you want. I'm using a waffle flower stencil mat to work on. It really doesn't matter what you work on. I just think this is really easy to hold your paper. It doesn't slip on there and it's easy to clean up. I also have my ink stand to hold my ink pad as I pick up the ink with the brayer. So what I do is I roll the brayer against the ink pad a few times, making sure it rolls to cover all of the brayer. And then I apply a little bit onto my cardstock. Then I can move on to another color and apply a little bit more, making sure I overlap. Here I'm kind of doing a rainbow going down the paper. When I switch from color to color, I will wipe off the extra ink from the brayer onto a piece of scrap paper just by rolling it on there. That leftover scrap paper where I put the excess ink can actually be used for a project later on. If you wanted to, you could instead just roll the excess ink off onto a dry cloth but I might as well put that ink to use on a scrap paper. Okay, so here I'm moving on to blue. That pool color I put down is a little bit too light. I'll come back and fix that later. Now here I'm putting on some pink and I'm overlapping the pink and the blue to create a purple. So this kind of creates an abstract look in the background. And what's really cool is when the colors overlap. And the brayer will put darker down in some areas and lighter down in others, depending on how you use the brayer. So play around with it and experiment. It's a great way to create colorful abstract backgrounds. Now on this background, I'm going pretty light. These inks will soften a bit when I'm done, but I thought I'd also show you some where I go a little more bold and don't really have the inks going down the background. They kind of overlap all around. So here I'm applying some peaches, some orange and yellow, and I'm just putting ink down in different areas. It's best if you let these colors overlap a bit. So here I did the peaches and oranges, and now I'm coming in with the yellow, filling in the empty white spaces, and then I'll start overlapping with the colors I already have, which will create new colors and create that fun abstract look. Now let's do one more. One thing I do like to do when I put down a color is put it down in three spots. So there I put one, two, three, kind of forming a triangle with those colors. Then I go on to the next one, one, two, three, kind of forming a triangle. And then I'll start to fill in whatever is left. This is a great way to make sure your color is kind of spread out. So you end up with something that looks fun and abstract, but also kind of even overall. It's hard to describe, but once you start playing, it's really fun and fast to create backgrounds like this. There you can see I overlapped with the green and it creates even more colors. Now, before we move on to more techniques, let's finish these off. I thought birthday cards would be fun. So I'm using the new Birch Press Floral Balloon Layering Dies. There are three dies that layer so you can create these flower balloons. If you wanted to, you could skip the flower la layer and just have polka dot balloons or skip both of the layers and just have a solid balloon. 
I decided to do the top two layers with white cardstock and the bottom solid with holographic cardstock so the center of the flowers shine through and have that iridescent look to it. I created three of those layered balloons and I'm gluing them onto the background. I wanted them to be more towards the top of the card so that fun blue and green towards the bottom shows. And I end up doing all three cards with the same basic design. This one's softer, the other two are brighter. For sentiment, I wasn't sure what I was going to use. I have these three different Birch Press die sets that I was trying to see which fit the best. One says make a wish, one says birthday wishes, and one says let's party. These each have that font that I really like, and they have a shadow die. I didn't use the matching shadow die today. I just did the words, and I chose to go with let's party. It seemed to fit nicely up on the top, overlapping with the balloons. On the first two cards, I did black glossy cardstock for Let's Party, and I used a silver pen to draw the strings, and I also added some iridescent gemstones. Those are Trinity Stamps Bubble Bath, and they match nicely with the holographic dots that are showing inside those flowers on the balloons. For the last one with the softer background, I chose a dark gray cardstock instead for the words. So here are three different backgrounds we did using ink and a brayer. I recommend trying this. You can also stamp over this or stencil over this. It's a nice alternative to ink blending, creates a different look, and it's effortless. Okay, my next idea for using an ink in Brer is to apply it over heat embossing for a fun resist. This is a great way to create a colorful background using a favorite background stamp. Today I'm using from Simon Says Stamp the new hand-lettered friend background. I love the look of this background. I'll be using it a lot. Well, today I'm using it by white heat embossing on white cardstock. I will use my anti-static powder tool. Then I'll ink up the stamp with Versamark ink, stamp that, and then add white embossing powder and heat set. You won't see the white heat embossed image on the white cardstock, but that's okay. We'll apply the ink with the brayer and that will give us that fun contrast. Now, by the way, the cardstock I'm using today is Hammer Mill Smooth White. You could use whatever white cardstock you have. This is what happened to be on my desk, so I gave it a try, but any white cardstock should work. I do think smooth cardstock is best when using a brayer or doing any kind of blending, but just use what you have. So now what I'm doing is applying different colors of ink with a brayer over that heat embossing. And I'm making sure my colors overlap to create more colors. Every once in a while, I will stop and wipe the excess ink off of the heat embossing. The heat embossing will resist the ink and stay white. By wiping away that extra ink, it'll really brighten up the white. Now I first thought I was just going to do stripes of color, a light pink, blue, and dark pink, but then I decided to do more overlapping and go in different directions and kind of change up the background. I even brought in a little bit of the Hot Mama, which is a Simon Says Stamp dye ink that I really like, just to add a pop of purple. So try whatever inks you have and try overlapping them. You create new colors that way and it's really fast and super easy to do with a brayer. I find blending with a brayer, just a blended background, is fast with a brayer, faster than an inking tool for me. But doing these overlap looks like this to get something a little more abstract is so fast with the brayer. I cut my background down to have a card panel for today and that extra strip that I'll save for a future card. Now for today's card, I used a few things to form that sentiment. First, I used from my favorite things, the Love Ya die set. This has the words Love Ya and the shadow die. I'll be using both, doing the shadow in white and the words Love Ya in black. I'm also using the Simon Says Stamp Friend Greeting Stamp Set. This is a new one and I'm crazy about it. I use it a few times today. On this one, I'm using all of these top small sentiments. I thought they all worked great with the love you message and I could use them all on the front of my card. I'm lining them up on black cardstock in my Misty stamping tool. I'm not really lining them up, I'm just putting them in there. And I'll use my anti-static powder tool, stamp it with Versamark ink. And by the way, I like to stamp twice with Versamark ink just to be sure that I stamp through that uh, anti-static powder. So here I'll stamp it again. Then I'll add my white embossing powder and heat set it. After I've heat set this, I'm using some dies to cut these out into even sized banners. I want them to all be the same thickness since they're all going on the same card. 
So I'm using the PhotoPlay Sentiment Strips die set. This is one that I use often. It cuts very thin sentiment strips, and I'm just positioning these around each of the sentiments. It doesn't matter if they're too long, I can trim them down afterwards. They all have the same width or height to them. After I've cut them all down, now I can cut off the extra on the end using my trimmer. The last elements to add onto this card are little hearts. I decided to die cut glitter hearts from Memory Box glitter paper using the Simon Says Stamps mini hearts party die, one of my favorites. And I'm just gonna scatter these around. So I have my background glued onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I added the love ya, then I added my black sentiment strips, and now I'm adding the glitter hearts around it. I thought it was fun to have those little sentiment strips kind of float around that main sentiment. From the same friends greeting stamp set, I stamped hello on the matching envelope also. Here's a closer look at that beautiful bright background, so easy to do with the brayer and the ink, and all those overlapping sentiments. I thought it was kind of fun and playful, a great way to use lots of sentiments on one card. By the way, I did, I forgot to show you, but I did stamp another sentiment from that stamp set on the inside and added a leftover glitter heart. Okay, my third idea for using a brayer and ink without a gel press is to color your die cuts and get a blended look. Now I did a video all about coloring die cuts with a brayer. I will link to it up here on the top right. You can check that out for more ideas. Today I'm just doing basic blending in a light and a dark and layering them. For this, I'm using the new Birch Press Flora Layering Dies. I am crazy about Birch Press Layering Dies, and these are beautiful. You can use them all separately or layer them together two or three layers. I'll do all three layers today. You can see in the bottom layer, there's lots of detail, so you could use that alone. But again, I'll do all three. I'm gonna keep the top layer white, but I'm inking the bottom two layers. I'm starting with the middle layer first, and I'll put softer colors on that. I'll do pink towards the bottom, peach in the middle, and then very soft red towards the top. So I've got my super light pink, pink ink here, and since it's so light, I'm putting a little bit more down just to kind of intensify it a bit. I will kind of make the ink go up higher than I want it to so that it can overlap with the next color. And here I'm doing a light pink peach ink. So just like when you're blending with the blending brush, you wanna make sure your colors overlap to get blending. It's the same thing when using a brayer. So I made sure that pink and that peach overlapped, and I'll make sure that my peach goes up higher than I want also so it, it can overlap with the next color we put down. Now this next color is kind of a light orange. I'll end up doing red on the darker layer, but you can see how I'm overlapping to get those colors to blend. So there we have a beautiful, soft, blended layer here. So brayers are great for doing fast blending. If you get frustrated with brushes, give a brayer a try. Now for the bottom layer, I am putting on a heavy amount of ink and darker colors. So this time I'm using the taffy color, which is a bright pink or a dark pink. In the middle, I'm using pucker, which is a darker peach or orange. And then at the top, top, I started with an orange color, but I ended up going over it with red from uh, Concord and Ninth, just to kind of make it a bit darker. So don't be afraid to overlap colors to get what you want. I then glued all of those layers together and we have this fun layered look. By the way, you can use a clean brayer to press layers together after you put glue between. So I have the darkest on the bottom, the lighter layer in the middle and white on top. So again, remember to check out that other video if you want more ideas for inking up die cuts, like small die cuts too. Today I'm focusing on the backgrounds. Next, let me show you how I did that hello heart in the center. I wanted to stamp hello friend and then die cut it with the detailed floral heart die that has that piercing to it. The way I went about doing this is I stamped onto white cardstock. Then I used the negative space of the die to line up around it. Then I popped the heart die into that opening of that negative space. That way I can be sure I'm centering it since you can't see through this die to make sure the hello friend is centered. I can run that through my die cut machine and there we have our die cut with hello friend stamped. I didn't stamp hello friend after die cutting because of that texture. I wouldn't get a complete stamped image. I wanted a mat for this heart, so I'm tracing the heart die itself onto plum colored cardstock and cutting that out. 
Because the die is a little bit larger than what it cuts, tracing it will allow me to get a heart that's a little bit larger than it cuts, and it gives you that nice matte. So I glued those together and added it onto our background, and I also added some white gemstones to the center of each of the flowers. You can see that blended color that goes from the top to the bottom. You have the light layer and the darker layer. This was a great way to use just regular white cardstock and colorful inks to create that beautiful blended look. Now my fourth idea for using ink in a brayer without a gel press is to use it to ink up a stamp with lots of colors. And you can use it to soften something after you've created it. So let me show you. First, let's stamp. I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Tossed Hearts Background Stamp. I thought this was really fun and great for this technique, but really any background stamp will work. Now I'm putting this in my Misty Stamping Tool, putting a piece of white cardstock into it, and then we will start inking up our brayer and then rolling it onto our stamp. I'm once again just applying it in different areas. Then I will press that stamp down and I'll repeat that a couple times just to intensify the ink. If you want it to stay soft, you could just do one stamped image of each color, but I am like to layer up that ink so we get more color on our paper. Okay, so now I'm coming in with some pink and adding that here and there. Usually I do one area at a time so I can plan where I want the next area of that color to be. So you saw I kind of did a triangle with that peach color. Now I'm adding some more pink in other areas also. I am making sure to overlap the area so I get blending from one color to the next. You could even do a rainbow stripe with a brayer if you wanted to, but I'm just doing different areas in different colors. Once I'm done, I have this really bright and colorful stamped image that looks very solid, but lots of colors stamped. Now you could leave this as is, but I noticed that those white hearts were a little too bright for me for the card design that I'm doing. So here's a way you can soften a background. Just use your brayer and a very light color of ink and go over the whole background a few times. This kind of softens it and makes all of the white area like a light pink and it blends everything a little bit better. So there's a little less contrast. You could totally skip that if you want, but if you have a background with more contrast than you want, try that. Use a light ink and a brayer to soften the whole thing. Okay, so I trimmed that down and added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I kept the rest of the card super simple so that background would show. I added a white heart die cut using the detailed heart die that I showed you on the last card. I also added a friend layer die cut. This is the Simon Says Stamp Big Friend die set. I cut the shadow from white and the word friend from black. I added a pre-printed Simon Says Stamp sentiment strip underneath it, along with some white pearls. So using a brayer with your stamping ink on your background stamps is another great way to use that brayer creatively, apply multiple colors of ink to a stamp, and get more from your supplies. I thought I'd give you a little peek into my next video where I show ways to use a brayer with your embossing folders and stencils. I hope you come back to watch that because there are a couple techniques in there that were really cool and a great way to stretch your supplies. All right, if you're interested in what I use today, I link them below in my YouTube description so they're easy to find. I will also link to a couple other related videos here at the end. I thank you for spending this time with me. Have a wonderful night and we'll see you again tomorrow.